You spent plenty of time writing, composing and recording your song. You've added the effects, the volume and the automation and you think it's ready for the world to hear. But before you hit upload, don't forget to add the finishing touches by mastering your song. Mastering your music doesn't have to be daunting and in this video we're going to guide you through what it is plus the essential steps to verify that your track is ready for commercial release. We often get asked about how to master using Entrack Studio on desktop as well as on mobile. In this video, we're going to use Entrack Studio on desktop, iOS and Android. Mastering is the final step in the production process of a song. It's where the song is polished and refined to make the song sound its best across all playback systems, whether that be a phone, car stereo or through headphones. The term mastering comes from the act of creating a master copy of a recording to be used for replication. This used to be a physical mould from which vinyl records were pressed, and now, more simply, it's an audio file that you can upload to music streaming services or even use to burn an audio CD. Be sure not to confuse mastering with mixing. Before mastering, the song goes through the mixing process. Mixing is where all the individual tracks that make up the song, such as the vocals, drums and the guitars, are combined into a cohesive mix. The mix is where the song's tonal balance, dynamics and spatial positioning are adjusted to create a balanced and clear sound. Mastering can be a creative and musical way to add an extra dose of clarity, energy or crispness to your mix. What it shouldn't be is a trick that takes a bad mix and magically makes it loud, clean and release ready. Before moving to mastering, be sure to review your mix. A good checklist would be, have you removed pops, hiss and any bad cuts between the music? Are the volume levels and overall balance between the instruments and tracks sounding right to you? Have you used panning to give a sense of space and width to the production? Are you happy with the EQ, compression and reverbs used in the mix? If we've answered yes to the questions and we're happy with our mix, Let's get to the mastering. We'll start by listening to the song and outlining a clear intention of what we want to achieve with the master. To my ears, this mix is well balanced and already quite clean, but it could do with more punch on the trumpet lead lines and more brightness in the drum rim clicks on beats 2 and 4. The whole song could also deal with an overall boost in presence and be volume ready for release. Let's open the Entrack Dynamic EQ and begin by making some subtle boosts and cuts to achieve what we want. Try to avoid making big cuts and heavy EQing in the mastering stage, as this will suggest that there's actually more work to do at the mix stage. Rather, when mastering, concentrate on small adjustments that can help bring your production to life even more. So let's start with our horns. We'll select band two, and boost the gain to find the frequency in which the horn lines are most present. Once we've found that frequency range, we'll bring the gain level down a couple of decibels. Same for the drum snare. Let's add a new band, exaggerate that gain to locate the range that the rim clicks are really popping at, and when we're happy that we found that range, we'll move the gain value to a more subtle decibel value. I'm also hearing that the bass could be ever so slightly increased for a groovy solid foundation. To achieve this, you guessed it, we'll add another band, find that bass range, and then lightly kiss the gain value to a maximum of 2 decibels. Let's hear before and after our EQ balancing.
Can you hear how before we had a flatter sound compared with the more dynamic balance after the subtle tweaks we made? Let's now open up the end track tube distortion plugin. We'll experiment with the smallest amount of drive to boost the saturation and warmth of the song. The tone needs to be kept at 100 and the volume boost at zero because we'll boost volume in the next step. We'll add just a light amount of drive at around the three value. Definitely use this plugin with caution. We can hear that by increasing the drive too much, the overall mix becomes distorted and loses its punch and clarity. By listening with and without the distortion, we can hear the subtle detail it adds to the mix. And I'll underscore the point again, just make sure you use this carefully. Let's open up the end track limiter and choose the soft limiter preset. With the preset selected, we can see the plugin working the game bar too much. You can see that the song clips. Let's try the look ahead limiter true peak preset instead. With this preset, the limiter is very good at avoiding distortion. We can try to squash the levels to the limit and noticing the song never clips. If we want to further refine any settings, we can adjust the ratio value higher to make the compression less harsh. We could also bring the attack and release values down so that the limiter can react more quickly to the audio signal. But for this track, I'm happy with how the Look Ahead Limiter True Peak preset sounds. If you want to review the inner workings of the Limiter plugin, be sure to check out our full walkthrough video here. We'll now open the Meter plugin on the Master Channel to make sure that the level of our song is ready for release. The Entrack Meter has a useful scan button that you can use to quickly scan the whole project and get a reading on the various metering levels, instead of having to wait for a song to play in its entirety. If it isn't already selected, choose LUFS from the meter menu. You can use LUFS to ensure that a song you export meets the loudness specifications of music streaming platforms such as Spotify, Apple Music, or YouTube, and even cinema, TV, and radio. With our song, let's aim for a LUFS level of the streaming compatible minus 15 dBFS. Listening back to the song, we can see that we're bang in the target range. We can then switch the metering mode to peak, which measures the absolute peak level of the waveform. Peak metering may sometimes miss peaks that are between one sample and the next. True peak metering uses oversampling to transform the signal into a much higher sampling frequency, which allows us to check the level of the signal in between samples. Note that true peak metering is useful when mastering your song. It isn't very useful to keep true peak active when you're in the recording composing phase of the production of a song though, as it may add unnecessary CPU weight to the song project. You can enable and disable true peak from the meter mode menu. Listening to the song, we can hear that there's a true peak ceiling of minus 0.1 decibels. Notice how our limiter gain value matches this true peak ceiling shown in the meter. We can now be confident that no clipping or unintentional distortions will occur on the export as our track doesn't clip above 0 dB. And if you're interested, we also have a full walkthrough tutorial on the Entrack meter plugin which you can watch here. To make sure there are no pops or unwanted noises at the start and end of our song, we'll add a fade in and fade out to the song. To do this, we'll use volume automation on the master channel, 
will show the master channel on the timeline by selecting the arrow icon. Then, selecting the envelope automation icon will draw a fade in and fade out at the start and end of our example. Here's how it sounds. As a general rule of thumb, a 24-bit and 48 kilohertz WAV is a great export format choice and should be compatible with streaming platforms and general uploading. To export an end track, click on the menu icon, select Mix Down Song, and then name your song and select WAV as the format. Bitrate can also be selected from the menu. It's worth noting here that 32-bit float can also be selected if you want even more headroom in your WAV, but again, 24-bit is a general standard. And sample frequency is set as 48 kilohertz by default. As a final step, do make a point of listening to your exported audio file before you upload it, just to be sure you're happy with everything and to make any final tweaks as needed. We've covered quite a bit of ground here, but one of the most important things to do is be sure that your song is even ready for the mastering stage. If you're satisfied that it is, focus on tonal balance, loudness, fades, and bringing out certain parts of instruments that you feel could do with that extra pop. We hope this video gives you the confidence to start finishing and releasing your songs, and as ever, have fun making music with Entrack Studio. Cheers.